All right. Um, I thought I could do a better job explaining the modular concepts to you because it was a bit shit the other night. Um, it'd probably be easy, easier to explain it on this. So this is a Make Noise No Coast. I got it secondhand for like 300 quid. I don't know what that is, $400 or something. But it's made by Make Noise, which is uh, the people who make some of the modules I was showing you the other night. Um, but uh, it's a standalone synth. And what it actually is, is kind of like a collection of some of their modules just kind of smushed into one unit if all you've got is just a midi keyboard you can plug it in and you can you can crack on it's fine but it's got these patch points which let you interrupt the signal flow the signal flow is like uh, dictated by these gold lines you've got a triangle wave here and if you follow the gold line that goes up there and it says okay that triangle wave is going into this overtone circuit which is then going into this mixer here which is then going into the amplifier um, at the moment, like I've basically just plugged the key step into it. So it's just behaving like a regular synth. So just the basics of it, you've got your oscillator. And then you've got, uh, instead of a filter, this thing's got like a wave folding circuit. So you can like add harmonics. So this is overtones and this is the amount of harmonics. So these controls are basically how you create your tones. Instead of using a filter, you use these. If this is the envelope here, you've got attack, decay, and you've got sustain. You've also got this um, exponential uh, uh, slider for the decay. So, so this is linear. So this is like a, a straight. Um, it, it it goes to attack and then it goes lin linearly down. But you can make that exponential, which is like an inward curve. Which is really nice for these like kind of plucks. So that's your envelope. And then you've got your slope generator, which basically is another envelope. The way this works is you've got an attack and you've got a decay again. So you've got these two controls again. I've got a, a clock here, which is like a, like a metronome. So I can trigger that. I can trigger this envelope here and you can see it's the same thing. I'll uh, plug it into the pitch. So you see, every time this is triggered, it's creating another envelope, but that envelope, instead of controlling amplitude, which is what this one's doing, is controlling the pitch of this oscillator. But what's different about it, this envelope, is that you can cycle it. So when you cycle it, every time the uh, decay portion is finished, it triggers again. So instead of using an external trigger like this, if you cycle it, when it decays, when the decay finishes, it triggers the attack again. So I'm not triggering it now, it's just looping itself. But what's cool about it is that you can create these, um, uh, you can create these different LFO shapes. So, so this would be a normal LFO. But with this, instead, you can go or and like with this one, there's a logarithmic to exponential uh, shape. So you can get all these interesting shapes that you can use. Uh, I guess your main use of it would be to. Um, shape of these filter controls so with these gold lines again you can see the slope is going into the overtone and a multiply so that means you don't have to patch anything in before you start hearing changes So you can use this to create interesting modulations to the tone. 
If you make the rise and the fall re-trigger at a very fast rate, you end up with... these kind of textures. But this thing runs so fast that even if you're not modulating anything... So this is our uh, output and mixer section. This thing, this uh, plug here means you can just plug an external sound into it so you can process external signals with it. But I'm going to go out of the slope generator, the LFO, into there. So what we're hearing now, we're not hearing this oscillator, we're hearing this. Because it runs that quickly. And you can even, so this is the control that was controlling the, the pitch from my keyboard, you can even, you can even play it as well because this uh, input here moves these together. It turns this single oscillator synth into a two oscillator, two oscill two oscillator synth, um, and it's nice as well. So you can, so you know, you can control both of them because this has got that input. So that's kind of like that's how this synthesizer works, um, just as a regular synth. And I've shown a little bit of patching there, but I'm going to now get rid of the keyboard and we'll just patch it on its own. So the way modular works is you use these cables, which are just mono, uh, like headphone cables. And all they do is carry voltage. What we've got down here in this control section is a voltage generator. So this knob here will send out voltages. And this is like a kind of a amplitude control of the voltage so this goes from zero volts all the way to five volts and anywhere in between what you can do is i can send this voltage into the envelope which is going to trigger the amplifier so now you've got a drone so this is the same as me just holding down a key on the keyboard except i don't have a keyboard plugged in i'm just using this voltage and it still behaves like an envelope. So if I take the sustain away, it's going to turn off. And if I increase the decay and then remove the voltage, it's going to ring out. That's basically how voltage works. And you can use that voltage controls everything. So I can, this is a se second output for this voltage. I can put this into the pitch. So now the more voltage, the higher the pitch. The way that pitch reads voltage is that it says that for every one volt equals an octave of uh, musical intervals. I mean, you never have to think about that. It just means that every time you want to control the pitch of something, you look for an input that says one volt oct. This voltage is going into an input called gate. And what a gate is, it's just like it either lets stuff through or, it's, or it doesn't. So currently the gate is off, which means it's not letting any voltage through. But when you put a voltage into it, it allows it through. So it's like an on and off switch. So me turning this knob is controlling the voltage. And that's where the term control voltage or CV comes from. And that means that you can send different signals into this gate and it will respond differently. So this is a steady signal, but then right here we've got a clock signal, which is like a metronome. And what that does is that, that fires off voltages every time this light is lit. So that's turning the gate on and off. And a little bit further, this thing here, every time um, it the metronome clicks, this just generates a random voltage. It's like me going like this. But it's just doing it. So that's gates. Triggers are very similar to gates, with the exception that you can't do sustained notes. 
So if you look at this light here, if I put this voltage into the trigger, it fires off once. I'll do that again. It fires off once, but it doesn't fire off again, or it doesn't stay fired, because this is just like it lets it through and then closes it very quickly. So again, this works well with the clock, so you can just you can trigger that with the trigger. Once you understand these concepts, you know how to use them, then it's just up to experimentation what you do with them. Let's say that you didn't want the uh, slope here to change the uh, timbre of the, of the sound. What you could do is you could take the control output of this envelope and then use it to shape these. So this is using the envelope to shape this, these controls here. Uh, which means you can use this for other things. So let's say if you want to use it as a FM source on the oscillator. And you can take this uh, random then you can use this voltage here to adjust the time of this. These are stackable cables, which means you can send any of these frequencies anywhere else. So you can go out of I'm going out of this uh, cycling LFO back into the FM of the oscillator and then I'm going into the input of the mixer. So now we're hearing those other tones. I can still control the pitch of the main oscillator if I want. But with these uh, stackable cables I could send that signal to both the cycling LFO and the pitch. That's modular, man. So, you, you know, you, what's cool about it is that you start off with a pretty straightforward synth. You know, you got your oscillator, your filter or your wave shape, LFO, and an envelope. But then you just turn it into, you know, whatever, really. You could just experiment, like, create some awesome drones. You can create these kind of, like, self-generative -genera patches. Um, yeah, and, like, so if you imagine, like, you know, this is the equivalent of, let's say, five five or six modules in one little synthesizer. When you've got a whole system of, you know, 20 modules or something like that, like the, the kind of the functionality seems kind of limitless. And, I mean, that can, that can be um, intimidating, but it, it kind of shouldn't be in a way because you know the basics of, like, 
what a gate is, what a trigger is, where where what controls the uh, pitch, and because they all use this, those same terminologies and inputs, then you just patch away and then you see what happens. Because there's there's no way that anyone knows the full range of possibilities that's that that's within a system. I don't know what the full range of pos- poly- possibilities within this synth is. Like if you look on Loop Pop's video on this synth, he's doing all sorts of crazy shit with it. And like it seems quite simple on the surface, but yeah, I don't know. Mate, hopefully that helps demystify it a bit more. I don't know, or maybe it made it more complicated. <laughs> I don't know. Cheers, man.